Belichick. Well, there's a couple turnovers there. Like, could have gone either way. So, uh, try to clean that up. That is a good Belichick. Thanks. Look, like, fellas, like, we can't go out there playing the game the wrong way. I saw a guy at Adam World Junior High the other day that makes that pass. <laughs> On today's episode, we have Martha's Vineyard's finest. How many times did the PA guy announce your name incorrectly tonight? Ryan Rosillo. Yep, so going to talk about Harden again. We break down Game 6 2019 Western Conference Semifinals, the Warriors versus the Rockets. It's one of my favorite games ever. The rant goes down in Game 5. And he's hurt. He is. Steph, he goes scoreless in the first half, mm. and he is absolutely destroyed. At some point, like, greatness just breaks whatever you're doing. Is a three-pointer. Puts it in. in Curry's generation, we've always talked about LeBron. I'm going record. Steph Curry, this is his generation, bro. He's literally revolutionized the game. Is Harden ever going to win a championship? As the main guy, never. Never. Second straight year, they eliminate the Dude, Rockets. Clay's a fucking nasty shooter, too. He's up there in the top five best shooters of all time. Oh, no question. But he's with Curry, who just so happens to be the best. Yeah, right, right. You know what I mean? So, I don't know. It was like you and Welker. Get out of here with that. What are we talking about? Games with Names is presented by Win Las Vegas and Encore Boston Harbor and is a production of iHeartRadio. Welcome to Games with Names. On today's episode, we break down the 2019 Western Conference semifinals with Ryan Rossillo, a man that loves basketball. He loves basketball. Loves it, Warriors, Rockets. We get into his love of Steph and Chris Paul, his catching a touchdown over Deion Sanders and celebrating in front of, we won't say, we'll save that for the episode. Yeah, it's a good one. The celebrity games get wild. pissed him off. <laughs> he wanted to fight him, he said. He wanted to fight him. Uh, a little Belichick impression off. This is pretty good. He's got a good one, but you know, he'll be coming up into my, he'll be coming up into my studio, trying to out Belichick me, boys. The master, baby. Come on, boys. <laughs> and we'll wrap up the show with our top five of top fives. Top five, top five, top five, top five. It sounds so much like what is that? Top golf. I want to say top golf. We should go do top golf. I'm down. Team building. Make sure to check us out. Games with names on your YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, and TikTok at Games with Names. Subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to your podcast. Comment a game you want us to do and rate and review. Games with Names is brought to you by Win Las Vegas and Encore Boston Harbor. Win Las Vegas and Encore Boston Harbor are the ultimate destinations for sports lovers. Enjoy the sports book, play golf, eat at a great restaurant, and stay in luxury accommodations. Sign up for win rewards and redeem for resort credit. Let's go. May 10th, 2019. Toyota Center, Houston, Texas. With Katie out, James Harden and the Rockets look to force a Game 7. But an icy Steph Curry starts to catch fire. This, this is, is Game, game six, 6 of the 2019, 2019 Western, Western Conference, Conference Finals. Finals. <laughs> it's better. Hell yeah. It's better like that. I like that. Welcome to Games with Names. Today we have a very, very, very special information sport encyclopedia kind of guy on the show today. He's the pride of Martha's Vineyard. You don't really hear that. There's not a lot of, you don't know a lot of people from the vineyard, unless you're from the vineyard. From, yeah. From Stay the one thing. He's a big Boston sports guy. He loves, don't you love Chris Paul? Do. You I love do. Chris yeah. Paul. Hung out with him a couple months ago. Not Did, a big deal. No big deal. Don't he brag about He loves it. Chris Paul. And he's the host of the Ryan Rosillo Show podcast. Ryan Rosillo, thanks for joining us, man. What's up, Jules? Good to be here, man. Yeah, it's uh, just a couple of guys that uh, lived in Boston, now living in L.A., shooting the shit on a couch, <laughs> talking uh, about games with names. Yeah, it sounds like our timeline in Boston, we just missed each other. But I wasn't going to bring a lot to the table, so it's probably better for me and you that we missed each other. Nah, I, would, I think it would have been fun. 
Yeah, but I'm in because of association. Back then, you would have been like, what? What do you do? You'd be like, why is this guy? Nah, is he bar backing? Yeah, but you always got There's always like one or two guys <laughs> that you, that are in that aren't part of the team that, you know. Yeah, because you had. They get a pass. I remember like what a big deal it was because I was there like as soon as Brady was taking off, right? So we're almost, I think, I think he's two years younger than me. And so it was such a big deal. Like I was doing Daily Boston talk show and they're like, Tom's moving away from Foxborough. Why would he do that? Does he not care about the team? And you're like, dude, he wants to not live in Marlboro. Like, give me a break. And I'm like, Belichick has everybody else convinced you shouldn't move outside of the facility. Oh, yeah. And then it was like, wait, Edelman's going to do it now? And so it was like, hey, it's not the end of the world. But I was just, I was just very proud of you guys for being like, hey, maybe there's nicer properties. Yeah. Near stuff. I lived in the Foxborough area. I lived in Plainville for... Probably my first six years. Right. And like how many times can you go to Bass Pro Shop? You, you can't, but the Plainville Deli was really good. But I'm we, sure it then, had then we, yeah. I would travel to Dedham to go to the Whole Foods because they didn't have <laughs> to get like a burrito or something, you know? The fact that you just lit up talking about going to Dedham is yeah. amazing. Yeah. yeah. Well, they put in that Dedham place. Yeah. It's yeah. like new. But uh, welcome to Games with Names. Hi, I'm Julian. I'm five foot 10, 195 pounds. My lap pull down is about 300, and my NFL comp is Delhi. Wait a minute. NBA comp. NBA comp. NBA okay. Comp. Yeah. Delhi. Jack, what, what about you over there? The Wombat, baby. Uh, Ryan, I'm Jack. Nice to meet you. Okay, Jack. Five, seven in shoes, 130, leg press max, about 220. I'll go with JJ Berea as my NBA comp. JJ Berea. And, and, and Kyler? Hi, I'm Kyler. I'm 5'10, 250. Uh, max on any leg press machine. Uh, my MLB comp is Prince Fielder. <laughs> Wait, let's. Have you actually done lap pull down 300 pounds? No. Okay. I've never First of all, that. I've never seen one that goes that high. <laughs> I thought maybe. I mean, look, you guys are freaks. You're, no. you're a freak. So I, I never, I would never put a cap. Like I like to say, don't put a salary cap on your life. Yeah. You know, I don't know. No, I, I, I don't know. That's, I, that's one of your things. Well, honestly, like, when we, do the, when we do the life advice part, I feel a little like Dan Patrick's show. That was what they did. Yeah. People just went height and weight. They'd hit a bell and they'd get it moving. When they called into his radio show, and I thought Dan's show is one of the best talk shows of all time. And, you know, look, I, I have massive admiration for the guy. So somehow, like, I give him credit for it because guys now are doing it constantly. But now the NBA comp thing is hilarious because nobody ever says somebody that sucks. Ever. I mean, I went to Delhi. And that's just because of yeah, but that's max effort. That's people l overlooking. Yeah, you. but I'm more athletic than Delhi. I just had to do that. That's more, you know, like a, there's a right, but small he's small white guy. And I know you had to be a big effort guy to get to where you got. But he had so much effort in 2015, he almost died just playing hard. Did Wasn't he? an injury. Yeah, the guy was like in the hospital trying to chase stuff around, and that's where I think that's a good comp. Did he get rapto? <laughs> what is that? Isn't that like when you you don't get enough recovery, and like it, you're blood boils up in Look your muscle Rab he rabdo he rabdo was, like people think i'm kidding when i remind people of that you know that series eight years ago and it was like no he, he wore him out it wasn't an injury he, he didn't get hit he just tried so hard he almost died <laughs> he almost died i remember that I, I think in a way that he didn't what so was that, that 15 yeah it was 15 so everyone was comparing us at the time because we just won a super bowl that year or in fifth in 14 and so everyone would say stupid shit like that. But today we're looking at Game 6, 2019 Western Conference semifinals, the Warriors versus the Rockets. Why we picked this game? Okay, we picked this game because uh, it's one of my favorite games ever. You know, I did grow up a huge Boston sports fan, and I remember, you know, if the Pats lost on a Sunday, I didn't have a lot going on in my life during this phase, but, yeah. you know, that's why we love sports. Like, I want to care about something, right? Got it. And so if the, if – this is before you, but, you know, if they had lost to the Dolphins, it might not be like Wednesday, Thursday until I've mentally recovered. And I didn't even play, right? Yeah. And uh, Red Sox would blow a, blow a save, and I'd be like, you know, if Derek Lowe hadn't hung that, that two-seamer, you know, like they would have won four out of five, they'd be two up. Like I was really weird about it, okay? This is before I was in the business or anything. And then once I got in the business, everybody would say, like, it goes away, it goes away. And I'd be like, not me. It went away record fast. Like 2003, when Wakefield gave up the home run to Boone, I was already doing local radio in Boston at that point. I would have ended up in jail in my early 20s if that had happened. And at this point, I was like, whatever, that sucks, and got up and went to work the next day. Yeah. So there are very few moments now for me where I actually emotionally care about the outcome of something. 
And a lot of that is connected to like how much investment I have in a position. And my position on Steph was early. It was strong. And he had already won a title in 15 when a lot of the Cleveland Cavaliers had gotten hurt. You know, they blow it in 16, 17, 18, Durant's there. This is the 19 run. Now, granted, they ended up losing the finals. But Durant goes down in game five, and they're up 3-2. Houston's headed home. It's Harden, who I have very little position in. Uh, I'm not a huge fan. We'll just keep it at that. We can get into it a little bit Is later. It strip club the night before, maybe? Uh, well, if it was not Houston, there's definitely a chance. But this <laughs> game in particular, I'm staying in New York City, and I'm anxious about it. I'm anxious about it because I just know if he has a bad game and Harden, of all people, who I have no faith in in big spots, uh, ties up the series, like, who knows? Does it mean the Rockets are going to go on? They can, you know, you were going to face Portland on the other side in the Western Conference Finals. So... He goes scoreless in the first half, Ugh. and he is absolutely destroyed. Like, remember Steve Harvey announced the wrong winner of Miss Universe? Yeah. Like, it was the kind of – that was what was going on in social media for Steph <laughs> the first hour and a half of the night. I couldn't even look at my phone. I had to leave my hotel room. I went and got a steak dinner at that spot on Grant Street that, like, makes you think you're in Panama for, like, three hours. And I was like, is there any way I can just get, like – just a small flat iron steak and sit here in the corner by myself where there's a full blown fiesta going on behind me. And I was like, can you keep the TV up on this game? And they were like, no problem. He goes for That's 33. That's a great environment though. Right. That's a good sports. And well, people were like, what's, and this happens to me a lot. They're like, what's up with the fucking hit man over there by himself? Yeah. Like not interacting with this 300 person party going on behind him. So the reason I always think of this game, it's one of my favorite games ever post years of kind of removing the fan emotion because that night I was a fan and I, was, I couldn't have been happier about what he did in the second half. That's a great reason. That's probably the best reason we've had on anyone picking a game that they're not even associated with the team. Is this the greatest game of all time to you? And you, you, we, we wanted to pick this game, greatest game of all time. All right. Well, all look, time. No, it's it's not. It's it's not. But this is. But, you just but, want to make your mark on this game. You want to highlight this game. Well, because we still have more evidence. You know, when when Steph won it in twenty two, I imagine there's a moment in how emotional they were for his fourth ring. You know, post Durant, and you know it was kind of a weird season in getting through that one. I'd imagine if you ask Kerr, Curry, Clay, twenty two probably means the most. Draymond isn't there too. Is Dray yeah, no, Draymond's yeah, still yeah, yeah. there. I, yeah, it's those four. Yeah, no, it's a Nucleus. great point. Nucleus. If you'd ask them, the one that, you know, the first one's obviously really special. Like, how many do you have? Three. Okay, so how will you rank the ones that are special to you? Go through them. Like, it's I'm tough. really interested. Spend time on this answer. Well, you know, the first one, like you're explaining, when you when you get the first one, it's the first time feeling. It's it's pretty insane. You you you've been dreaming about it since you were eight years old. And then you're, you're. What were you doing at seven? Or seven, six, five. I'm just wondering why that was amazing. Specific, <laughs> well, because eight was my first. Yeah. Eight was my first year of football. Okay, so there you go. 1994. That's the answer. So the second one we had, it was the 28 to three game. So like we had an insane comeback. So like the hill we had to climb because we put ourselves in such a hole to win that game is like crazy and we also and then i also had the catch thing so that you're always hearing about that. yeah you play. have arguably the biggest i mean there's a lot of big plays over the course of a game but yeah. that's the one where it's like if it doesn't happen so regardless i'm hearing about that catch so that that one's pretty cool and special and then the last one you know we're, we're kind of older you know I, I tore my acl the year before i got suspended and then they get a super bowl mvp like and you almost so, died in that game I almost died like, in that like game. Like, 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 nah, I was on. I was on that game. No, there was a stretch that I thought you might have not known. <laughs> but I know this was is it all been in, in 19? <laughs> Did I take a hit? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the, that one ram route on that third yeah. down where then I, I ran and across you, the field. And then you came back to, didn't you come back to basically the same, same thing? It was like, well, it sort of worked, so... Well, if you're hazy on that one, I'm not shocked. <laughs> Wait, that, that's in the, you're thinking of the Cam Chancellor one. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, the kid, that was the first one. That, I, w I felt like I was tired. I was really like Delhi on that, that game because. Just an IV, you're good to go. Oxygen no, tank. <laughs> we were, so if we're talking about the Cam Chancellor here. Everyone thinks I was knocked out. I wasn't knocked out. We were doing two minute drill. For, we did two first downs, so like that's like you're at like nine plays. And so you're Seahawks, Falcons, Rams. Seahawks, Falcons, right. Rams. Okay. 
Yeah, yeah, I, I inverted it there for a second. No, but like, I'm I'm interested in this. I, I know tired. I think we've casually yeah. talked about it, but it's brought up all the time. And granted, all of us became concussion experts on everyone. Twitter overnight. So, everyone, yeah. yeah. We had probably like nine plays going, or like maybe five, six, but we were, I had a lot of downfield routes. And that's like, I was fucking beat. You know, like, and we're sprinting in the Super Bowl. You're going max effort fucking every time. We're, you know, it's just, it's literally like life or death in the Super Bowl. The game is that much faster. Every play you're trying your hardest. So I was fucking dead. And I took on, on the punt that I caught right before that drive, I took a hip pointer. Oof. So a guy came in, got me at the end, helmet to the hip. My hip, and a hip pointer is crazy where it, sing, it like singes up. And it like pulls all your muscles, but then like during the play, you can kind of like you your, your fucking pure motion and, and adrenaline is so high that like you don't feel. It. But then when the play's over, you're like, oh fuck, like it pulls back down. So I got hit on that play. I got up and I started running because I didn't know if I was fully down. And you're gonna do it regardless. And then I get back down, and if you see, I try to get up, my fucking hip pulls, and I'm like, ah, my hip. And then. I get up and Amendola's like, dude, are you all right? Are you are you there? I'm like, yeah, it's my fucking hip. It's my hip. You know, was it a bet? Was it? Did I take a big shot? Yeah, but I wasn't. I've taken fucking. I've I've been hit by Brian Dawkins where I saw a star for three fucking weeks. That's when I had a concussion. You know what I mean? Like my my rookie year in Denver, he hit me on a crosser so hard I saw a star for three fucking weeks. I learned how to catch with it and everything. I was because I couldn't say anything. I was a young player. I was trying to get fucking reps. You know what I mean? So I know what it is when you get lit. I got lit up on that play, but I wasn't out. Yeah, that's that's one of those moments I just remember because like you guys, what I loved about that offense with you and what actually seemed like pretty simple, but it was either a Tom factor, it was either your route running. But just those little inside slot, like pivots, you know, five yards, and it's just take it. I'm going to take yeah. it. And maybe other teams weren't patient enough for it. And obviously, they kind of like reinvent it. But that's something. I that think it I worked very well because Gronk was hitting seams. So he was taking that. And so there's a lot of stuff under if you could read it. And so you get a lot of two shell because of that. And there's a lot of holes in two shells which are just like you got to find the spot. You got to know where like the vulnerability of the, the zone is and you, you sit there. And so like Tom's so patient where he would hit those. And then we would get them in like a third and three or something. And you're always getting man coverage on third and tight, third and, third and short, third and medium. Because they're just trying to screw up the timing yes. off the snap, right? Well, they're, yeah, they're either the route, bringing someone right, right. or they're, they, it's just usually tight man. Whenever it's like a key situation, it's always some sort of man. Mm -hmm. Like that's just how it goes down. I mean, it was re it, it was really how the Patriots need to try to f find a way to play now. I mean, you, you have a good defense, you know, you, you, you stay ahead on the down and distance, right? Let, let's, let's stay on track. Let's be patient with it. Let's not, like, fucking throw the ball downfield on second down or first down into a team meeting when, the, like, let's just, like, control the game, you know what I mean, and play and win the situations. Win third down and you win fucking the red area and that's how you win. And that's, that's, I don't know. I just got back into like why the Patriots aren't doing good right now. <laughs> I love so, it. I'm so I'm mad. Start, I'm, I'm so, using and, some and of this you stuff. know, no, but you, br you brought up a really good point. And this actually, I'm not going to segue for you because you're the host, but there's something about what you said on the routes, right? And it's funny because like I'll have moments where I get so mad at wide receivers, right? And I get that it sucks. It sucks for 70 plus snaps where you're supposed to run hard and then you got to block. And then it's like, if I'm not getting a couple looks. So when I think about like you having to, and granted, you weren't a number one receiver as far as like coming out of college and all that kind of stuff first round. So I get, I get like the, that part is a little bit different. But what you just said about like Gronk, like you're clearing out or his gravity is pulling all these different guys around, right? Yeah. And it's like if all of those dudes aren't on the same page, and for Bill and with Tom, like you knew that was going to happen. Like you're not going to be out there running routes if you don't know what you're doing and you're taking plays off. It's just not going to happen. Yeah. We've seen some big-name receivers come through being like, wait, what am I supposed to do? It's the exact same thing about Steph and the Warriors and everything that I've loved about this team is that they play every it's possession a it's a pro. to the last second. When I watch them play a possession offensively, they run a screen, the defense jumps it, 14 seconds left on the shot clock, most teams pull it back out, let's go one-on-one, -on -one, or somebody will just take a three. They'll just reset. 
run the same thing. Guys keep moving. They'll move off the ball until the last possible second. And that was part of their success and my admiration Team basketball. for that. Right. And I know it sounds like old school and it's it's your dad wondering why they're not bunting more, right? Yeah. <laughs> but for what you're talking about with the gravity of running routes and all of that stuff, like none of that shit works unless you know all four or five guys that are going out are doing what they're supposed to be doing. And it's really easy, especially during the regular season, to not want to do it. The Warriors have been doing this now for 10 years. And that's what made me fall in love with them. Yeah. It's the Warriors. I'm from the Bay Area. So are you into this? Like, I, You know what? No, I wasn't. <laughs> you were like, what did he pick? No. I no, no I'm, into I this, I'm into this game. But no. I, I thought you were talking about the Warriors in general. Like, I, I, when I left. Am I the first guest you've had on that's not played in the game? No. Oh, okay. Just we've had sure. multiples. We had Rich Eisen. We've we had, had Mark Cuban. We've had, I don't did know. Did Cuban pick Bert? an intramural game? No, he picked, he picked uh, the Dirk game. That this, makes a little this more one's sense. For he Dirk. does own the team. I did catch the game winning touchdown against Deion and Desmond Howard for a celebrity beach flag game. It just I, we could that, run the footage of that. We did something eerily similar to that. Uh, the stupidity level with uh, Big Cat. He did. A, oh, what just did for the do? record, I've noticed very little interest as that description came out. So we can move on. Yeah, we'll <laughs> move on to that one. We'll move on to that. <laughs> Big Cat did the uh, the bar stool TBT championship. At um, oh yeah, the first right. one at BU, <laughs> way back before TBT was even on ESPN. Or I've anything. seen the footage. I like their jerseys. Yeah, the they, starfish. It was fun. They showed up, just giving off a professional vibe. You know, we always want to see what the guests want to do. You know, no, I this one's a bit. I mean, look, it was the game winning catch. I had to talk to Joe Montana to letting me get out there run routes because he had me playing corner the first half. And my big thing was like, hey, to whatever thing I'd play. Montana that. threw you the ball. No, Jesse Palmer was a quarterback, and which helped because we had a decent relationship. So I was like, I felt like if I get out there, I get a couple targets. And I went up to Joe Montana. And people, anyone that's listened to me has heard this story before, I just wanted to tell you because it's one of my favorite things ever. I love Joe. Is we're at halftime, and I yeah. fucking love Joe Montana. I love Joe Montana. My dog's name was Dwight Montana as a kid. After Dwight Howard? Uh, Dwight. <laughs> Tim Dwight. No, that's cool. No, yeah. You're living in L.A. now. I get it. Yeah. Uh, so I... <laughs> I my kid's out here, okay? <laughs> my kid is out here. I'm out here because of my kid and no, my I podcast. Know. I, that, too, is also a good reason. But, you know, I didn't play offense the whole first half. And Jesse's like, hey, you know, he's like, are you going to play any offense? I'm like, I don't know. Like, you know, So i like, fuck it. I go to Joe Montana, and I'm like, hey, is there any way I could just get a couple routes? And he's like, well, Ryan, you know, you get a couple fucking Hall of Famers, LaDainian Thomas and Tony Gonzalez playing offense right now. But sorry, we can't get you a couple. Joe targets. Montana said that. Yeah, it was unbelievable because it was like I had done two events with him. So it wasn't like cold. Who was this guy? Least famous guy at a celebrity thing, because that's kind of like the funny thing is like Markle and I were like two of the least famous people. So I thought we really hit it off. We did not. <laughs> so I um, I just go I'm like, can I just get it? And Jesse's like, you know, let him get a couple. And I went max effort, like just throwing guys down off of the line, just the whole thing. And then we came back after a touchdown. And Joe's like, all right. He's like, I think I got something here. And then, you know, I ran a route and Dion's like, whatever to this guy. And then I celebrated in Desmond Howard's face. And honestly, he hasn't spoken to me since then. Not that we hang out a ton, but I went so overboard of like just stare down, put the ball on the ground and like didn't break character. And he was like, oh, really? And I was like, for a day. And, I, you know, honestly, if I'm Desmond Howard, I would hate my guts, too, because you'd be like, what a loser. You took this way too seriously. Nah, I would have I would have had to go after you. I, I wouldn't have. I would have gone after. You. Oh, I think this is the route right here. Let's see it. Um, you may see me just circling, circling, circling. Hand up, hand up, hand up. That's Des. Dion just passes me off. And then I put it down. I look at Des. Des at this point is like, that's on Dion. And what year is this? You got hair. Uh, I think it's 10 years ago now. It looks like 2014. Yeah. Direct TV celebrity I was people. deathly hung over too. Dion could run. Still. Dion, you can he see didn't have the Dion. toe. Dion's pushing. He's, he's saying it's Dez's guy. But when I put the, when I spiked the ball down. He passed you off. Desmond looked at me like he was like, I make kill you and yeah i, I didn't bro, break there there's a model i think it's it's uh <laughs> hannah davis goes to high five me and i'm like no no i don't <laughs> that's not what this is about right now regardless of if this is a, a, a charity game or not these dudes charity where is it what is a charity i just celebrity, oh, celebrity. celebrity. Me. <laughs> oh celebrity <laughs> regardless listen i didn't have something wrong with me i just they were like we need some athletes <laughs> You know, it's one of those. Yeah, no, I get it. Thanks. <laughs> you get a, you get <laughs> an athlete buddies. in there, dude. 
You get an athlete in there. The mentality of an athlete. Yeah, I mean, he's a pro. It doesn't matter. Oh, I thought you were talking about me. No, Thanks. I'm just saying, I'm saying <laughs> you, you, you're stepping on a gridiron. He's right. He shouldn't like me. Just look how I acted. Yeah, you got to act like you've been there. Well, it was a game winner. I mean, it is a celebrity thing, too. You got you to gotta show a, some couple, swagger. A couple guys said, don't ever put your hand up like you're Randy Moss for the entire route. That's a no-no. You got to be Randy Moss. You got to. Yeah. I remember. Did you ever put your hand up? Always. And I would be <laughs> Yeah, but you were pretty good. So It would be more of like, a, but I remember I did it once, and, and Tom, I used to do it early in my career, and Tom came up to me and goes, Julian, I fucking see you. Don't put your hand up. Like, he yelled at me when I was like a young player about it. And so I didn't do it until I got older and I started catching like 100 balls. And I yeah. Said, <laughs> and I, I, and I would be doing it again. And I, I would only do it in like the red area when like you get a little scramble and they would pee us. You know, if they pee drop, they're only rushing three. And Brady, he'd have time. So I'd always put my hand up because you see that red glove. Get, that's a touchdown. I want a touchdown. Red gloves. What's the maddest he ever got at you? He never really like. I was fishing for a story. Yeah, so. I don't got anything. You got along that well. That's a great credit to your friendship. I remember my first day though with them, or my first my first spring practice with the team. They put in four wide, and you go into rookie camps and you're with rookies, you know. And then then the bucks get there, and you know, and then the top dogs get there, and like your reps go down and stuff, and like you 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 sit and you're watching fucking Tom Brady execute at a high level, throwing fucking beautiful balls to Randy Moss, and yeah, you know, that was crazy. But the first day I go in. They put in a four Y package and I was the Y and I ran this hook route and Tom threw it to me and I dropped it. And like, he just goes, Jules, catch the fucking ball. <laughs> and I was like, tail in between my legs. Thought I was getting cut. Like that's, that's the one time, like we, it was just nuts. That's the only time I remember him. That, well, cause it still had to be surreal. It was still know? very right. surreal. I mean, like, yeah, I was watching him. How could it not be? You know? I was watching him win Super Bowls in eighth grade. I know. God. On the asphalt saying like, hey, I'm Tom on the fucking, you know, because he was a Bay Area guy and I never liked Indy when I because I, I, I got the tail end of that whole thing. Mm -hmm. The Indy Pats. Sure. But I never liked, you know, I never liked Peyton Manning. He always he was always the guy. He was the best guy in college. He was the best guy in high school. His dad was a pro. You know what I mean? He he was just always he was the guy, and and he sure. was a fucking stud. Yeah. I like Tom because everyone always at that point early in the uh, the the Super Bowls, people were still saying Peyton was the best quarterback. Remember? Yeah. Look, I I had a phase even as somebody who loved Tom because I just was like I loved it. The same reasons you brought yeah. it up too. Just an underdog. Then, and like, then it, he he was fucking hungry. Honestly, like and he won games. Towards the end, I started like rooting for guys I knew or guys that you know would come through and work with us in the off season yeah. or something. It became more personal. But like I started rooting for like his resume. Yeah. You know that it wasn't even about the Pats anymore. It wasn't about being from there. It was like I just want the resume to keep going. And I'll admit that yeah, earlier in that window, even when he got his first one. Which was crazy to me yeah. because, I mean, that was a huge deal. All of us still kind of loved Bledsoe, even though the writing was on the wall, was sort of the evolution of the whole thing. I remember we had Bledsoe on the show once, and I was like, let's do a deep dive into this. He was like, all right, cool, whatever, no problem. Just mention the winery. Couldn't be a nicer guy. And my co-host that was filling in that day was from Dallas. He's like, okay, so on the same lines, like when you got Bencher Romo, and I was like, oh, my God, this is the worst <laughs> 12 minutes ever. We're like back to back. Like I get the first one, and this kid was a Cowboys fan. So he's like, let's do the same topic but different location. So that's just an aside on Bledsoe. But – I, I was guilty of the Manning thing because I don't know that I really, you know, football is weird because I think most of us to talk about have literally no clue. We don't know what the protections are supposed to be. We don't know what the coverage is supposed to be. We don't know what the routes are supposed to be. We don't know what the reads are supposed to be. Like it's, you have to really know. And we're all watching the wrong angle. And so I'm always a little admittedly unsure. I'll be like, hey, I think this guy's good. I think this guy might not be, but there also could be a version of things that I don't quite understand. And hell, if I were a quarterback and just point to a guy to make this route thing all the time like Romo used to do, then you're watching on TV being like, ah, I wasn't on Romo. Yeah. It's like really smart to do all the time. Just like, hey, 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 like the cut symbol with your hand. But when I was watching Tom early, I'm like, well, he's not as good as Manning. And then it was like, wait, you want to see right? And then every year he'd come back with a piece. Like his play action was incredible. Then the pop on his arm, like – 
the, what he did to build himself up and then to turn to this guy. And then it's like, oh, you want me to do a Randy Moss season? I'll, go, I'll throw for 50. You want it to be about me and not the defense and special teams and all this stuff? And it's like he had three different careers in yeah. the same career. Granted, longevity is part of it, but I know Brady wasn't the main focus. I just knew I couldn't help myself. But so, you know what? You want to segue it again to Curry? Let's segue it to Curry. No, I can no. do it. I can do it because of the doubt part of it. Because of the doubt part. Yeah, it. Sturry, it is. undersized, Davidson. You know, it was weird. There's to- always a guy that, ever, like, in Curry's generation, we've always talked about LeBron. Which we it, should, because LeBron's should. better. But I always argued, like, I thought Curry, maybe not somewhere now with the 22 ring, but leading up to that, I felt, maybe I was more in tune to the criticism, but I felt like he was more dismissed as a contemporary star by the other guys. You know, like, LeBron, I felt like times made it weird. Everybody's cool now. They get older. I don't know how if it was like that with Brady. Like, were other quarterbacks like, well, it's Bill, it's all these things, it's all these different things. I don't things. know. I've only been one. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure there's probably some haters out there. I'm Look, sure. we, we can find, and, and that's another lesson. I'll, like, if you want to find criticism of your favorite guy, you just need a Easy. phone in two minutes. Like, you're going to find it. Especially but nowadays. I, I think there are some similarities in even your thing. Like, I just loved – that because it wasn't supposed to happen with Curry, it wasn't supposed to be this, each time he did it, the second we maybe, like even in this series in 19, he didn't shoot it great in game three. Game five, he closed really strong. The final numbers weren't that great. But going into that game six, it was like, oh, well, you know, everybody was hurt on Cleveland 15. They blow the lead in 16. Durant shows up 17, 18. Can he do this? Can he, can he get through this? And look, again, they got to the finals. But that's what that game meant to me because he was still – I felt at that time in 19, not now, he was the most disrespected star. And I don't mean just like really good player. This is somebody who's back-to-back MVPs and people were kind of pissed about it. I'm going record. Steph, Steph Curry, this is his generation, bro. He's literally revolutionized the game. He is literally – like the game – there's no more Shaqs. Like, they, and even if there's a guy that's like Shaq, they're only getting two points. These guys are lighting up <laughs> fucking threes. And it's crazy. I don't know basketball, Ryan. No, yeah. I, mean, I played AAU bro. when I was like 12. And then after that, I never really, you know, like. Did I, you only play football from 12 years? No, I played football, baseball, and basketball. But okay. like but basketball wasn't my natural sport. I was just always rad athletic. And right. I can get to the hoop. I didn't have the vision. I didn't know, like, I didn't know the etiquettes and, like, the little nuances of when to cut, I, like, naturally. I knew if I had a coach and I was really good at def- obviously, good at defense. I right. had to try it. But, like, I could get to the who. I just didn't, I didn't see things the way I saw it on a football field. Could you shoot? Uh, I had to practice. Yeah. I, I, I was a practice guy. Like, I can't go shoot right now naturally. Right. But if I were to have to play, right. I, would, I was a gym rat. So then... I would be I would be shooting. Yeah, I'm sure I'm sure you're probably pretty good and you're you're comparing it to your other accolades, but I would agree that look, LeBron's the better player. As much as I'm gonna sit here and I could rave about Steph yeah, all day I long. Mean, LeBron, he's LeBron, the better LeBron, player. Yes, but and, he's yeah. But the impact part of it, because and this is a, this is a simple body thing, all right? Steph's the first guy kids looked at being like, Oh, maybe I can do it to some of this stuff. Like you don't ever look at like there's no teenagers sitting around no. like well, looking well i just maybe say junior <laughs> high because there's some massive high school kids but you're not watching lebron going maybe i'll be six eight and have the greatest vision since magic johnson you know yeah. it's not it's not obtainable where steph was the first guy in what you know i remember a gm 20 years ago it's one of my favorite quotes i used to go to all the draft stuff i still do go to the combine and everything for the nba and he was like ryan we're in a height business we are in a height business and there are the exceptions <laughs> and we can talk about all the guy but like steph was the first guy that physically felt obtainable as a star. There's just like that sport's not supposed to let this happen. Yeah. So I would agree with you on the impact part of it because as soon as he started coming around and I still like to play pick up whatever, you could tell I'm like what the hell is going on here? Like guys are just pulling up from all over everywhere. the place and I'm like pick up basketball. You that's look what I mean. Everywhere. Right? Yeah, it wasn't it wasn't about trying to do like any cool layup or like try to emulate some Jordan thing up until the no dunking part, but like guys would be cradling layups and all this kind of stuff. And then all of a sudden you're playing pickup going, wait, so dudes are just pulling up from like a couple feet behind the NBA line. And that's just what happened. I mean, men and boys. It kind of sucks. <laughs> There's also like if that. You wa- if you watch <laughs> basketball now, like I watch basketball right now and I watch like, I watch teams just 
shoot threes back and forth. They don't even, and like when they're not making them, it looks bad. Uh, I would agree with you. You know, as much as I love it, it doesn't mean I can't be open to like legit criticisms. And, you know, I love league pass. It's part of the job. You know, it's not a bad life watching yeah. basketball all the time. But there's certain nights where I'll go, this is just who's going to make more threes. It's not about, you know, the reason I love college football so much is I feel like I can throw on a game and know which conference is playing. Like, granted, I'm going to know who the teams are. But if you just, you know, made the uniforms blank, I could probably go like, oh, this feels like a Pac-12 game. This is a Big 12. This is an SEC game. Yeah. And basketball growing up, you know, depending on what your roster was, what your, your strengths, weaknesses were, you would try to play around that. And basically, basketball has been solved. And, you know, for years when some of these cut like Rick Pitino in the 90s in Kentucky was like, take more threes, take more threes, take more threes. A lot of people are like, what is this? You know, Barkley during the beginning of this Warriors run, I love the guy. He picked every single team they went up against because his NBA, this isn't supposed to happen. This isn't supposed to be successful. It's about post play. It's about the big guys and all that stuff. And then we realized it actually isn't. And you just have to outperform the other team with threes. So Steph was part of that. The analytics was part of it. It's pretty and, too. And look, no one's ever done it better. And Steph's the best shooter ever. And he's part of the best shooting backcourt it that we've ever Clay seen. too. Because Clay Does is, it? Dude, Clay's a fucking nasty shooter, too. Well, of course he is. But dude, Clay, I think Clay, Clay can shoot. I think Clay is one of the rarely like wired NBA guys. It's like, I'd rather just be with this and dominate and not be the headliner where I think a lot of guys end up leaving going, hey, I want to win, but what I really want is everything to work for me, and then if the winning happens, that's cool. Yeah, it's true, but I mean... It's, it's so different from he, a football But thing. he is... He I mean, he's up there in the top five best shooters of all time, oh, too. no question. That's great, and, but you never... Like, he's with Curry, who just so happens to be the best of all time. Yeah, right, right. You know what I mean? So, I don't know. It was like you and Welker. Get out of here with that. What are we talking about? Dude, inside routes... Third man. I was we different. Just covered it. I was different. He was he was smaller. <laughs> I I was in different spots. I had like sixty percent of my catches on the outside there. I right? wasn't serious, but Let's I do. Go. I do. Let's appreciate. go back to May right. 10, 2019. It's a segment we do. We talk okay. about it. Okay. Twenty nineteen, May tenth. Let's Avengers do it. Avengers Endgame was the number one movie. Do you watch those? Are you a Marvel guy? I gotta tell you, I grew up. Uh, I have some. I have some slight. I know I come. You're a writer like, and stuff, so you're, you're in the you're yeah. in the, the biz. No, I get it. I show up in the studio and be like, "Man, this this is one of the coolest guys we've ever had here." Everybody relax. Like I can see it, but <laughs> there are some things about me growing up that are like dork central. I used to fucking love comic books as a kid. Yeah, Spider Man, Peter Parker line. I actually like better than the Amazing Sp uh, Spider Man. So like when all these movies came out, I did a thing for a film class. Uh, in college where I had to come up with my own movie and I had to cast it and I was like this whole Marvel thing has to pop at some point this is in the mid 90s so you called the you, I wrote well I don't think it was I was the only called, one you called it so I, I said you should do Spider-Man and this is how you should cast it and like this is the whole thing the guy was like you said See. Toby you wanted Toby as well no I think I went with Jason Patrick because I always felt like Peter Parker was more important to cast than Spider-Man like yeah. you couldn't have somebody whatever I loved Wolverine I loved the Punisher <laughs> I loved all this stuff so the point is, is like it's a bit like Curry, honestly. Like when I went to the first Spider Man, I walked out dejected. I was like, "What the fuck did they just do?" I got, I think I got like a C. You didn't like on the, the first paper. one. Uh, I just my my hopes. I was very protective of it. My hopes and everything were way too intense. So then once I started to realize like what the Marvel thing is, but I just felt like it's like a lot of stuff. I couldn't keep up with it anymore. Yeah. And then I felt like it was a bit like. Set up, set up joke, set up, set up joke. And I feel like the dialogue. And now I'm just going to get in trouble. Be like, this fucking asshole hasn't even sold anything. And he's telling us Marvel isn't working. So maybe we edit this out. Nah, it, it, it is a little Disney now. It got well, because it's owned by Disney. Yeah, I know probably. it is. Yeah. But you can't go to Disney. I know it's owned by Disney. <laughs> I know you did. I know. I just <laughs> like the original help Iron Man. The original Iron Man. The original Iron Man's incredible. Yeah. I just think, you know what that I think? It did? didn't have the Disney touch to it yet. I'm going to give you a great example of this. And it's not Disney. It's not Marvel. It's not anybody that's involved. They're all great people. I love Disney. Okay. But when I was at ESPN, at one point, I was like, you think we're overdoing this Tebow thing a bit? <laughs> and. They were like, ah, the numbers show, you know, like it's a it's a really polarizing topic. And like I remember at one point I like told Van Pelt because we were doing the show every day then. I was like, 
I think he stinks, but I fucking give up. Like, they win every week, and it's some miraculous thing. I'm like, I just don't, I can't possibly fathom, like, this can't keep happening. And then we were in New Orleans for an event, and he throws the overtime 77-yarder, and I'm like, are you kidding? And then it becomes, like, something you can't quantify. It's just this, it's whatever. And then you guys played him, and I was like, oh. I'm like, this kind of feels a little bit more like what I thought. Bill was just licking his chops, being like, I get to prep against this for a playoff game. <laughs> But the point, the reason I'm going to make this analogy is that we kept talking about it nonstop, trying out for the Jets, right? He's, he's I think, in camp with you guys yeah, at one point. He did. Too. He did. Right. I wouldn't he's, let him throw to me. <laughs> well, I don't want the lefty ball. You ain't going to ever play with me. <laughs> I didn't even want to get these sight lines. Well, now. no, because it's a different, it, it spins a different way. I don't want to get used to that. I, like, I, want my, I want my right-hander throwers. Really? So you couldn't catch... Now you can catch it, but I don't want to even fucking. I don't want to. You don't even want it. You don't even want to float it up there. Don't give me gimmicks. There's a pretty good chance he wasn't going to give me a lot of first first team reps anyway. So (laughs) ESPN would be like, you know, what are you guys doing on Tebow this week? And I'd be like, there's no way the audience still likes this. They love it. There's no way. And they did. They loved it. They loved it. They loved it until they didn't love it. And I think what happens is that you keep going to, you just keep feeding the person, and then you don't realize that they've been fed until they're sick. And so, again, not to say like Marvel is TiVo, but there's a point of like, I can't keep up with it anymore. And then everything's intertwined. And once I got so confused, I was like, I get it from a marketing and the money that you're making because you kind of have to see them all. But it was just tough for me to keep up with. I'm just so far behind. I I have anxiety like... Like Ant Man, the new one. You're like, no way, dude. I, I get anxiety. Don't leave the like room. I, I'm so far, I, I can't commit to it. I, got I can't even issues. fathom. I, I, think like, a, I think that's a bigger problem. I have commitment issues, maybe. I'll tell you, that's that seems solvable though. Of all the issues anyone you can do have, have a good life segment. You talk right. about. Yeah, we gotta... I, I think of having any problem like you just have to get them like in order. But like, okay, eighteen. This one came out. You can just bang that out in a, a bad week. Yeah. Like what'd you do? I watched twenty Marvel movies. <laughs> like, is Jules okay? Yeah, it's it's that's a lot of time though. Like I feel I... if you could do that, I'd be more worried, actually. It's that's dude, you gotta be committed. Right, right. So what else happened in twenty in twenty nineteen? What happened in the sports world? We we beat the the Rams. That was cool. Giannis got the MVP. I was with uh, your boy C. Long in Atlanta for that Super Bowl. Were you? Yeah, we made it to uh, this dive bar. This what was C. What was what was Long saying? Oh, they don't have fun there. They don't have fun. Oh, these guys don't ever have fun. <laughs> you know what's fucking fun, Chris? Winning Super Bowls. I, for the record, did not say that. Chris. After that, after he left in the in, in seventeen. And they went out there, and, and I love Chris. What, I, they I'm won busting. a Super Bowl of Philly? Yeah. <laughs> they went and went, won a Super Bowl of Philly. I don't think he had a bad time. No, and and but they had the headlines, you know, Lane Kennedy. Or it was Lane Johnson. Johnson right, said, yeah. like, oh, we have fun or something. And so then around our facility, we lo- when you lose a Super Bowl going into the next year, you know, you're like, oh, that. You're starting to hear it's not fun. People are starting to talk. I went on the chalkboard. There's a chalkboard right when you walk in the fucking the building. I was like, what the fuck is everyone talking about? I just put winning is fun on the first day. We left there. We went and won a fucking Super Bowl. We all had fun. Like, it's, it's ridiculous. That sounds like a t-shirt. Everyone thinks everything's supposed to be fun. Sometimes you got to do dirty work. Sometimes work sucks. It's like the what you're trying to work for is the fun. Not, you know, not everything's fucking fun. This, this, this is people's jobs on the line and shit. No, I mean, look, anything that I'm trying to do that's, like, hard to do, you go, yeah. oh, this is why everybody quits. Yeah. So, I look, you're speaking to somebody who, like, again, your shit's a little cooler. Super Bowl MVP is a little bit cooler than good first take segment back when I they had me on as a guest. But, I mean, same same was village. Was pizza by then? No, I wasn't. <laughs> no. I ended up getting, I ended up way getting back banned up. from first take. Yeah. They were like, see you later. Did you? Yeah. Skip, Why? Skipped in life. I'd wear that yeah. as a badge of honor. That show sucks these days. Oh, I don't know. I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't like I was going to long term be a part of it anyway but they were like yeah skip doesn't like you and i was like honestly that's great <laughs> like i'm doing something wrong if he's like i i actually really like that guy i would be like Ugh. yeah how is so in, in how is he i'm in the fox family now if i see him in the well, yeah the, i'm gonna the, leave you out of it then yeah. you're in the fox family good for you i like fox i have a lot of friends that fox work is, there but hey, I, I don't the working environment is pretty fucking cool it's uh look man a lot of people that I've worked with, and and once they're there, they they love it. They love it. Yeah. yeah. So that's I, good. I'm not bullshitting you just because we're on the air. There. That's a, that's a true story. 
Remember when did Tiger won that Masters in nineteen? That was I. You ever go to blue, Augusta? Huh? Yeah. I, yeah. Did I went, you get to play it? Yeah, I played it. Who were you there with? Brady. Um, RKK yeah. and Brian Montgomery, I think. From uh, did get a birdie. Did you really? I, what's the uphill on the the par five uphill? Is it eight towards or, the? Is uh, it eight or is it like? People that know it know it. I've been. I went yeah. a bunch of days. I went three days in a row. I don't know what that. I mean, it was fucking awesome. Yeah. You so when you go to the when you go there. So have you been to play and the tournament? Too? I never went to the tournament. I just played there. I'm not the biggest like golf guy. I'm yeah. not like hardo golf guy. Like whenever I go out and golf, I'm like, am I supposed to just compliment this stranger on like a par every yeah. every twelve minutes? That's yeah. weird. Oh no, granted, every twelve minutes would be a pretty good round. But when I went in, my expectations were through the roof. And that's one of the few things that have ever exceeded. Like, okay, whatever expectations you can have for Augusta. And, like, not, like, I didn't expect to have this spiritual awakening because I'm not, I don't have a million polos that are striped at home. And so <laughs> when I went in, it they're so, like, you made it. You Like, the whole collective is, like, now that you're here and you're inside the gates, we want you to have the best time. We want you to appreciate it. It cannot be oversold. And they keep the menu pretty cheap, don't they? It's they like, do. Ice cream sandwiches. Like a buck. Yeah. We had a buddy that was English who looked like Ian Poulter, and people were so fucking thrown off. They were like, what happened? He's like, oh, I didn't make the cut. That's the bad accent. I didn't warm up for that accent. <laughs> and uh, they were convinced that Ian Poulter just decided to join the gallery and pound beers. And then finally, he would be like, hey. And then the guy was like, I get it. He's like, oh, you don't want anybody to know. <laughs> and he was, just, he was just hanging out with us. Golf fans get after it, don't they? Big time. And that's the other one, too, where they don't let you bring your phone. They, no, no, no. No, and don't. so you spaz the first, you know, whatever, yeah. 30 minutes, you're checking for your phone thinking you lost it. But, you know, depending on your setup, you can. there's, like, these hosting areas. You can go in and out, grab some beers. It was great for us, too, because, like, the average age, I think, was 85, and we were all in there in our 30s. <laughs> yeah. So, Dude, you, you, you're not even allowed to bring the phone on when you when you stay there. Like, we, we stayed there overnight. We stayed at one of the little houses. Huey Lewis was in there. It was fucking awesome. News? Sans the, news? Yeah. <laughs> the news. Right, but were the news there? No, nah, it, it was just, just him. him. Yeah. Just him. Just him. I was going to say it's a big house. No, but when you go, so you have to wear, like, jacket, tie for dinner. You can't wear, like, So you did, like, the full-blown. I did the full-blown. This is pretty cool, You man. go there, right? I'm talking about Augusta, and I'm sitting next to you. No. I'm going to just lay out here. No, but when you go, it's crazy. Like, they don't have menus. You just tell them what you want. And, I and like, <laughs> yeah, there's no menus. They cook anything. It's fucking crazy. You just and, go shark ceviche. It's on. It. I don't know. Maybe. It's like that. It's fucking. It was. It was crazy though. We went there, and Mr. Kraft was wearing. Uh, I don't know if I should say this, but he was wearing his aircraft ones. Oh yeah, those are tight. And you know, it's it's very uh, old school there. You know, and the guy goes up to Mr. Kraft. He goes, "Hey Bob, I, I guess you didn't get the memo on our shoes." <laughs> and Mr. Kraft was like, "Oh, so he was like so offended. Like he was like he was embarrassed that he was like it was so awkward for me." It, I don't even so know. So what to, happened? Did he have to change his shoes? No, he he kept them on. So he kept them on as the power move, or was he embarrassed? Like I don't. Where's the I think, embarrassment come from that he wore the wrong shoes, or that someone would dare challenge him? I think it was. I think if Nike makes you your own custom shoe, that should break all. They don't give a fuck at Augusta. No, they don't. They don't. But in a weird way, I think Crafty won it. Yeah, I don't doubt that. But when people bitch about the golf. Thing. They're I, they're I they're very right, yeah right. I didn't grow up with it. Um, I just started playing again recently, just because I was like, whatever. You're getting old and you have no friends. So <laughs> I was like, the things that people don't like about the uptightness. I I'm at a point like, if they want to be uptight, let them be uptight. Yeah. Like in these small little pockets of uptightness, I actually think it can be okay. But I do think if you have a signature Nike shoe and you own a football team, you probably should be able to just trump any of that. Yeah. It, I don't think they care there. It's such a weird right. community. Those golf people. You can't. Even, I think women aren't even allowed at the bar. That I don't know. No, I think that's like one of them. Like, or a certain days you can't have. There's like they're real good old boys over there in that golf community. Tough membership, I heard. Tough, very tough. What was going on in the social these days? Uh, May 2019, Rosillo. What do you got? It's amazing to see the motivation and the energy Houston is playing with after Katie left. 
These are just a little little salt. This is from game five, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So KD goes down with the injury. Uh, Curry ended up having a great close to that one. And then I was already, look, this is over four years ago, and I already knew the label because, I mean, we, we all have to be something. And for me, it was a Curry apologist. That's why I said yes to this game. But they did a really, really good job defensively. And even when you go back and watch, I was watching game six this morning coming over here. I was like, dude, at some point, like, Greatness just breaks whatever you're doing, yeah. as you know, right? And they were they were selling out. They were doubling him. They were trying. Then he just basically raised his own level of like risk of going. It's like what I love about great quarterbacks is I don't want a guy with zero interceptions. I want somebody that's going to give somebody a chance every now and then. You can't just sit back there saying, hey, look how great my QBR is. Like every now and then you have to kind of raise your level of risk depending on what the game situation is. And Curry definitely did that in game six. What's the other one? The other one seems a little more vicious. This Where? this is uh, I was doing a little bit of a deep dive. This seems to have been from the pod the day after, <laughs> the day after the game, and there was like a, there were a couple articles on it of of you being a, a pretty impartial guy, and then going on record is just yeah that saying, was, I can't stand the Rockets. That was a rare one. I now remember this open. <laughs> um, now a couple things had happened. My Harden stuff is well documented, and I feel good about that position. If anybody watched. The Celtics series, uh, I know we hit two game winners. And we all get accused of being biased about everything. And I, I think I'm pretty good with it. You know, I think I'm pretty good. Like, I can admit there's some places in my body I still need to work on. I'm fucking biased. Right, right. But I'm like, biased I, towards the Patriots. And, okay, but that makes way more sense because you're part of the family. I did not play for the Warriors. So, <laughs> of all the bias I get accused of all the time, most of it, if I see it, I'll be like, that's total bullshit. So I go, I'm just going to 180 on all this. I'm just going to tell the Rockets and their fan base from the jump. I open that podcast being like, I can't stand the Rockets and I root against you all the time. I love so that So there move. you go. And they also had done something where they went back and did their own private study on the officiating after the fact. That was in 18. And then they released their own study as impartial and then leaked it to members of the media to then get it all out there. And I was like, this is the kind of stuff with you guys, like, you know, whatever. I mean, we want to talk about officiating. We we, we had uh, was everyone against you? I don't know. But we we, we what game did we do? Uh, oh yeah, we did the um, with Bibby the O two. Oh yeah, yeah the, yeah, the, uh, uh, that's the rigged when, one. That that was literally, Kings Lakers that was for real. Officiating was fucking awful. I remember that as a kid. I remember watching that game, and that was because uh, my my big thing with like all the conspiracies is like, okay, then what do you think would happen in sports if there weren't all these pre planned things? Like, what would the outcomes be? Like what would what would happen? I think that's why people fall in love with it. It's because it's not scripted. That's my point. I agree with you, and that's why I just don't buy into any of this. Is stuff. it scripted? And, and by the way, it's like so, it's such a thing now. Everyone talks about because it. it isn't. First of all, let's just start. Can't there, be scripted. Okay? Eventually, someone would crack and talk to sixty minutes. It's too good. It's too good. There's too many moving pieces that go around. And by the way, when I watch like a lot of these, no offense to younger kids on Instagram, you have this account and it's like awesome. You have internet at your house, but you sit there and you throw out these videos and then you edit it and narrate it in a way where it's like everyone wants to believe everything's like way more fucked than it is. And sometimes I feel naive or I'm not asking enough questions. But when it comes to sports, I'm going to put all the other stuff because I don't know. I don't know enough about it. I believe stuff. in people. But in sports, it's just it's coping, man. It's yeah. a coping mechanism. Yeah, I I just dropped some knowledge. That was good knowledge. That was a good bit. Right? No, I there. could just see you're stunned. You're a pretty smart fella. <laughs> Only on this topic. Games with names is brought to you by my friends at Win Las Vegas and Encore Boston Harbor. Win Las Vegas and Encore Boston Harbor are the ultimate destinations for sports and entertainment fans. From the sports book to gaming, restaurants, live music, and more. Whether it's a casual weekend getaway or that special occasion, the sports book at Win Las Vegas or Encore Boston Harbor is the place to watch and wager. From straight bets to parlays, teasers, and any prop bet you can dream up. And if you're a golfer, oh, spend a day at the Win Las Vegas 18 hole championship golf course. Looking for an incredible steak? With an unbeatable view, try Rare at Encore Boston Harbor. Remember, sign up for win rewards and redeem resort credit in Las Vegas and Boston. Enjoy it all.
in a luxury resort setting with five-star accommodations and all the amenities you can dream up. I will see you in Boston or Las Vegas soon. Jack, why don't you set the stage for yeah, the Houston Rockets? Here, I will. Jackie. Sorry, I went down a rabbit hole over here on the uh, the 2018 Game 7 internal audit, which is just abs it's uh, so absurd. It's absurd because if you really dig it's into such that a funny audit, move. they were like, oh, this call cost us 1.8 points. And then I was reading through it, and I, I was like freaked out about it because I was so fucking mad, which led to that open. I started like tracking their audit to the in-game stuff of the program I have. And I'm like, you guys just like rounded up on everything in your <laughs> it's, favor. It's fucking hey, absurd. Hey, and dude. they leaked it. They're the ones that did it. <laughs> then they fucking leaked it. And I look, that was five years ago and I'm still mad about it. So keep it moving. It's insane. Eight, hold on. 81 instances of 81. calls or non-calls that resulted in 18.6 points taken off the rock. By the way, they never the, point out the, the absurdity of like, there also could have been some missed calls for them. It's just, it, that move is just so wild. Who did this? The, 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 the Rockets. Teams, Rockets. <laughs> yeah, the Rockets did it. And let me just tell you that the league, I don't think, was thrilled. Yeah, I can only imagine. Yeah. And I know who they gave the reports to because I worked with the people. And then they were like, oh, us? Like, you, you wanted it out. And the, game, the fucking series was over. Don't miss 27 threes in a row. We all remember that row, one. And then come out with this stuff. So that's what was the the genesis of that rant. Where and look, Daryl Morey, I've known him longer. We're not tight, obviously, as you probably tell, but I've known him longer than any other guy that has a front office job. He was in Boston. He couldn't have been cooler to me. We got along and there was no like thing. I'm sure he didn't love some of this content, but he shouldn't love it. Like this is like I admire the guys that are doing this every day, working every hard, fucking competing, having a goal, you know, everybody trying to row. And I love sports for that reason. Sometimes I think I'm wasting my fucking time because it's like you're not on any of these teams. You just watch them all. So anyway, the point is, is even with all that, I was so th I was so pissed off. This is kind of where the whole hard and like it all got ramped up after yeah. this stuff. That was the 18 series. Little Jeez. origin, little origin story for you in case you can't see the Ant stories. Man. You got some good ones. I love that. Um, we'll run through the Rockets here real quick. Finished West in the four, or fourth in the West that year. Harden had his his little thirty point streak that season. Oh wow! Ended up averaging thirty six point one a game. Um, they uh, this don't forget they had Melo early in the season. This was Melo's short Mello. stint in Houston. Um, Chris Paul's second year after that trade. Lost Trevor Ariza, who was kind of a key piece in that. You love you love 18. Chris Paul. I do, I do. He's I was we greatest were, winner who's never won. Huh? Greatest winner who's never won. Oh. I can imagine a guy with three Super Bowl rings would be like, yeah, that's cool. I look, he's one of the smartest players of his generation. Uh, I imagine at this stage of his career, he's going to figure it out. He obviously doesn't want to come off the bench, so you know, I don't know how that's going to work because he can be a ball stopper, and this offense is all about movement. But I think he's smart enough. And I think he can play off the ball because he's still, a, you know, or he had been. The shooting numbers are leaking a bit there. I'm just worried about his health because, you know, he's getting the guy, old. How old is yeah. he, 37, 38? Yeah, I think he turns 38 in the season. Is it May? That's tough, dude. That hardwoods, your knees, they run so much. Yeah, 38 right now. 38, 38 now. Is the birthday so May? May 6th. Great, man. No one the birthday. That's a real fan. That's terrible. You fucking love Chris Paul. <laughs> You just love him. No, because I think I remember a guy rounded up. I was like, take it easy. Yeah, so that was this Rockets team coming off. Uh, he balled out in this game, too. Like, did yeah. you watch the – like, he was, he, was, he was pure. He was carrying these guys in the second half. Um, just couldn't could not stand that Curry onslaught. And then, yeah, as we alluded to earlier, this was coming off that year where they lost in game seven um, to the Warriors in the Western Conference Finals the year before. And there's that kind of that narrative around that two-year span of, like, where do these this Rockets team rank amongst the greatest teams to never win one? Where I think it's a little bit ridiculous, but I hate those stats. I don't really like that kind of <laughs> those kind of arguments. Uh, Ryan, no, where do you stand those on those arguments? Uh, the greatest team never to it's win. It's just one. like I don't. Well, the what greatest we team to never win one would be the Warriors the year before this stuff. So or two years before in sixteen, right? Seventy three win team. You know, look what LeBron and Kyrie did was off the charts. Games five, six, and seven, and Curry stunk down the stretch. They couldn't score. There's some injury excuses if you want to get to it, whatever. The Cavs have a million injury excuses for 15-2. So we could go in circles all day with this shit. But the idea that anybody is better than that 16 Warriors team that won 73 games that lost, 
You know, it's kind of like that Pats team. Like, what, one, whenever, giant loss. Whenever I see like the top ten greatest teams of all time in the NFL, I'm like, just put them six for Christ's sakes. You know, Pretty but you're just good. not you're not allowed to. But that team, the weird thing about that team is like, I felt like offensively the first half of the season it was just horrifying how good it was, and then it was like the league felt like it caught up a little bit, but that was just me watching tape. You tape. get the tape. Yeah, those the first four weeks are always. See what wrinkles they implicated in the off season. What their emphasis is, right? Because if you had played the Giants, like they were shitty at the beginning of that year. There, the, that, those Giants teams were always like it. It was a Coughlin team, so those those teams are like we're not trying to be our best right now. You know that whole Parcells right. thing. We're trying to play our best football at the end of the season. And those, I mean, I lost to them in eleven. They lost in 07 this, right. that year, but like. They were never the hot team. Like, I think Coughlin was on the seat both of those years. Both of those years, those teams were pretty average. I mean, especially the 08 The D-lines, though, there, were but, always – right. they built their teams. You know, I always hear with the NFL, it's like, hey, there's like three seasons in the season. There was a stretch during this Warriors season where if they had played in the finals, like say, you know, you know, this is stupid, but in December, like they would have won the NBA finals in three games. They wouldn't even have played game four against anybody. But it's just – and look, even the way that final series started in 16 against Cleveland, I was like, this thing's a wrap. And, you know, you could get to the Draymond part of it and everything. But, yes, you shouldn't be arguing, no, we were the best team that lost. Because eventually <laughs> I would just be like, hey, dude, I don't – cool, you win. You win that one. I've never been to the Oracle Arena, and I'm, I'm, I'm from this there. This was the last there? year of the Oracle. Yeah, you want to hear a stat? Uh, I've been to – Three Warriors playoff games, and they're zero three Ooh. during this stretch. You're Drake. That's hard to do. You're the Warriors, Drake. But you got to go when they play the Celtics in the finals, man. That would be I awesome. did go. I did go. I went. I went to Game Three, and the Warriors lost. And I was there with a buddy of mine. And then I had Game Four tickets, and I felt like I got to do this for my dad. You know, he's the guy that got me into all this stuff. And then my brother's like, "Well, I'd like to go." And I was like, "Fuck." So I was like, you guys can have my tickets. And I flew back to L.A. And then Steph went for like Bro, absurd. What so a I, fucking, what, uh, what, a, what a mensch. Yeah, but you or family first, dude. That That's good. Oh. A mensch is like, oh. you're a stand-up guy. I, the way you said it, the tone of it, <laughs> it made was, it sound like, but it, it, like. Oh, yeah, he's a mensch. Okay, yeah, yeah. Now see, I'm, I'm kind of mad about that. Yeah, God. Is that is that kind of one of those like aloha words, though, where it can mean? No. Mensch is always solid. Yeah, Salt of the earth. Always. What a mensch. I should know that by now. What a mensch. All right. Thanks, man. Gives up his seats. I regret it. I do. I'm, I'm mad at you I'd for doing I, that. I'd rather I hadn't. <laughs> <laughs> it's already done, though. It's done. It's part of history. They got to see it. See, Ryan, that leads me to another point of, like, my conflicted relationship with Steph. Like, I'm a Davidson guy. I know Steph a little bit. Love him. Oh, wow. But, but. So, what? wait a minute. What's your NBA fan base? Celtics. That's what I'm getting to. Okay. I'm what? pissed. Like, I'm, I can't root for him anymore after the fucking series. And twenty two, I can't. I mean, it's like it's. Are you one of those me. Celtics fans who thinks the better team lost that series? Yes, one hundred percent. You and Grant Williams. Yep, I'm pissed. He's gone. I'm pissed. He and Marcus. Smart I just thought gone. their offense stunk, and they were down the been, stretch. Yeah, yeah, I will. I will agree. Yeah, but I it's just. I just had to throw that in there. I just. I can't. Hey, I get it. We all it's have a our weird, passions. It's a right? weird confliction. I, I don't understand. So like, it just seems when the key situation ever came out with those, those Celtics teams, like they just never performed. At the, the end, when they needed a bucket. But they kind of did, though, all right? Because I think what happens is we just keep, as you get on. Tatum and, got hurt. Yeah. Right, but, like, as you advance in rounds, it's just, like, I have this idea of quarterbacks, right? There's the five to seven guys. Like, I have one tier for Mahomes where if I were doing my quarterback tiers, it would be like, I don't want to hear about any fucking interceptions. That would be the first tier, and Mahomes is the only one in it. And he gets to be there. Like, I don't want to hear about it if he has a bad Monday night game of like, do we need to recalibrate this? Right. So I think there's maybe the list is five. You know, Josh Allen, it, it feels a little turnovery, but you're including the first two years where I wasn't even sure he's going to be a long term star. But there's that group of like five to seven that I don't want to hear about. I want to update this stuff every single week. And then there's like 10 that stink. And then there's that middle pack where you're going to be right. If you think a guy's great or you think he's awful, you're going to be right in one of the weeks. You come in Monday, you go on the shows, you'd be like, I told you my guy was the be like, yeah, okay, but in week four, he's going to be bad, and then I'm going to feel like I'm right. In the NBA, we do it with the stars. We don't have that, like, penthouse level of stars. Well, like, Tatum goes crazy against the Sixers. He breaks Steph's Game 7 yeah. scoring record from a week before that he had at Sacramento, 
And then it's like, wait, the Celtics get to the NBA Finals and lose to. I still think it was a better Warriors team. We'll just disagree, Jack. That's cool. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, I don't. I don't think it's a, like an unreasonable one. We just disagree. There's oh yeah, and better. I'm I, like but, full disclosure. I'm a full Homer like right. Homer and I, guy. I think that Heat series is a joke no because that Ugh. was. I, look, the Heat could have had a parade, and I was going to joke about like I still don't see it, <laughs> you know, because I just couldn't believe that they were doing something that's not done, but. If they were here's here's the point. Like if they were a mess, how are they even getting this far? They're not yeah. a mess. Okay, but how you're saying like, oh well, right when it gets to that point, no, there's you're, been, you're ignoring the other awesome parts. Yeah, but you, that no, that's got true. them to there in the first place. Yeah, you. Yeah, but in Boston, this championship or dis- disappointment, and it's the fact you got Steph and you know Clay I mean? guys. I mean, who've done that's it just how it is. And you're right. Talk, you're right, and that's a great championship. standard. Right. I, I, we're all trying to get to the championship. Right, but and like, win. what if the what Celtics if, have that fucking standard? Yeah, they Everything's do. Everything's disappointing unless you win a championship, and they've been so goddamn close. That's what we gotta learn last, from this. You know, three, four years were like okay, but but let me let me put it in your terms. Like, you are, and I mean this as a compliment. You're spoiled. You've got three of them. All right, in a city that that has that standard that we're talking about for an organization that essentially has like a modern day Celtic standard. If you hadn't had any. All right, and you lose in the AFC title game to somebody, it's a 35-32 shootout, and then guys like me are like, there's something wrong. Their culture, you know, there's just something about this team. Maybe, but you also could be in the locker room being like, we had a late turnover, man, a fumble that went the wrong way, and they recovered it. So sometimes there are these massive statements attached to, like, the psyche of these teams, and maybe you're right about the Celtics or what. Maybe it is true sometimes. I just... I put, I'll always push back on it because, like, if something was really wrong, they'd be 40 and 42. But it's been three seasons now where, like... So what would you do? I don't know. I don't know basketball. See, I would, I would go, hey, I'm you have... I'm asking you. These what guys you give you a chance. Yeah, they give you a These guys give you a, give shot, you a but... chance. So if you think you're going to improve on the chance, go ahead. But more often than not, you're not going to improve your chance. They should have been in the finals last year. I think Denver would have beat them, though. God, I, I still, still can't... I still can't believe the Miami. Series. Freaking Max Struess beat like, like what? Game what, seven what? in Boston. In oh, dude, can we move? Dude, Gabe Vincent turned into Clay. It's uh, fucking annoying. There were like some crazy, crazy Miami numbers. Where it was like no teams ever done this. They did it like game one. All no them, teams yeah. ever done this. I remember they that. did it in game two. Freaking the game he Cody won. Martin, the God. only game they won in the Denver series. Their fourth quarter was the single most efficient offensive fourth quarter of any game, regular or postseason, of the entire year. Yeah, they got to be standing on their heads to like have and they, any chance. But the and thing they is, kept doing it. They did it. Look, and Spo's great, and there is an edge there. The culture thing, I totally buy in with them. I, I give them a lot of credit because in basketball, you don't win an NBA title. They with seem inferior. tough. They are, but inferior talent. Like I think, in I think football, the Celtics you, need a little of that toughness. Yeah, I would agree with that. Agreed. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like when. I'm just saying, when 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 the team needed something, they got some really good ball, ball players. They got someone's got to step up and make a play. That okay, players win you games, coaches lose you the game. You know, however, that's what we used to hear in New England. Bill used to say that all the time. Players win the games, coaches will lose you games. You know, and, and it means the player needs to go out, and if the coach isn't doing the right thing, putting them in the situation to win, and it's different in football. Coach, coaching is way more important to your thing than basketball. Yeah. Like, I'm not a big blame the coach guy. I just think it's stupid. I think it's easy. Yeah, Same way fans will blame refs, you know, because it's, like, identifiable. Like, one of the things I always bring up that's funny is, like, most of us don't really know what the fuck's going on, yeah. but if somebody doesn't yeah, call it, building. right? But if somebody doesn't call a timeout and it looks like it was a bad call to not call a timeout, then all of us are like timeout experts. We're like, well, should have called the timeout, knew it. <laughs> Instead of like, no, we should have played man on that, or this dude shouldn't be over no, here. No situational right. football. I'm, 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 I'm out there to to get people. You I should. Will, I will be. call them out. Oh, you are. All we're right. Get back to the game. <laughs> Oh, man. All right, we'll run through the Warriors here real quick. This year, they were going for the three-peat to contextualize this game. This was, as we alluded to earlier, final season at Oracle before they do like all teams and leave Oakland uh, in the dust. They uh, went to the Western Conference Finals for the fifth straight season. Or no, they won the Western Conference Finals, excuse me. Uh, Steph was balling. It was KD's last year there. You've been to that new, you've been, so you've been to the new one? No, no, I didn't go to the – I went to Boston for the finals. But I'm just saying I'm 0-3 for Warriors playoff games through the entire Curry stretch, which is oh. an, it's an impossible stat. Yeah, I thought you were at the one in San Fran. I went to Oracle, and then I went to Boston. I have not been to the new one. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that's supposed to be pretty cool. You know, Clay Thompson, he takes his boat to work. Loves the ocean. He yeah. lives in, like, Tiburon. I'm a boater. That, what a fucking, what a life. You got a boat here? 
yeah, I don't take it to the crypto.com place to <laughs> suit up. But uh, how cool would that be? Like, as just a, a, a I feel like you're dismissing my boat ownership, but yeah, that would be. Yeah, cool. I want to hear more what about kind yours. Of boat, what kind of boat you got? Forty six foot prestige twin Volvo Pentas. Where do you you drive in the marina or out in the motion? You take yeah, us out right out there. This is, you don't really hear of boating a lot in L.A. You know, yeah, because you gotta like people have told me they're like, you know, you have it and you just sort of go out and it's like, all right, well, are you going to Catalina? Are you going down to Newport? But I don't know, man. I go up around Malibu, cruise around. I love. Do you know, it. Do you know, you have, do you know yeah. the waters and stuff? Here, it's actually not as you know. I mean, I'm trying to jinx myself, but just stay away from the coast is a good rule. Yeah. And then go around it. I think I have a hyperb on there. We got the whole deal, man. Joystick. You know what the hyperb is? I I thought I did. It's the it's like the signal. If you get lost at sea, it. it shoots oh the yeah, signal. yeah. I've got one of those. So I ordered we had, that. We had a that fuck first week. This guy was on Amazon ordering every safety device going. Dude, I, you want to know? I know about hyperb because remember when the, those football those football guys got died on the fucking boat in the Gulf? Yeah, yeah. Bill gave us a forty five minute lecture on hyperbs and if we're gonna go boating you should have a hyperb they also noted boater every detail with that guy every detail yeah. like it, like it was fucking I, so every time i i talk to a boater you got a hyperb i do have one you i do I mean? have one yeah because in the beginning i was like "Ooh, what, how many accessories God, can i get on this it's thing it's terrible that those guys did no that, that's but, yeah it sucks but but yeah this was also a postseason marred by injury with the the warriors this year draymond or uh demarcus cousins going down KD injured, uh, Steph banged up with the finger. Clay gets hurt in the finals. I was at that one. Clay blew out his ACL. I was there for oh. that. They took the free throws, um, and that was also Brutal. the same series when Durant went down. The Toronto Raptors fans, who are fucking terrible, uh, cheered cheered for Durant's injury. And wow. it's funny too because the Raptors fans would be like, you know, you go back and look at it; it's not that bad. You go back and look at it; it's even worse to remember. Yeah, because they get sort of like the rap. Like, oh, they're just passionate, but like I, I can't put that together though. Like Canadians are are nice people. Not all of them. Scumbag. Like when Toronto you go fans. to, I went to Toronto. I've been to Canada like twice, and like everyone's pretty fucking nice. Yes, like awkwardly nice. Like yeah. sorry, hey, sorry. No, I would agree for the most part. But and then this game itself was a tale of two halves. Curry scoreless, held in check in the first. They were blanketing him all over. His first bucket Went was nine forty nine, and then his second one was five minutes to go in the second. Didn't quarter. miss a shot in the paint in the second half. Oof! The Harden inbounds is, is the oh the Harden inbounds is legendary. Of just like it kind of encapsulates how I think of James. Can we play Harden. it? Play it. Yeah, this is late in the game when they're down five, but still kind of alive. So is it one oh seven one oh two or what's? Oh yeah, he just hit a three. So this is yeah. Watch this inbounds. <laughs> And then Harden goes to blame him. Oh. If you're the Rockets, you don't want to foul. E. That was, honestly, that is, that's everything. In a nutshell. Yeah. First half, you think it was going to seven? Yeah. Well, look, it was still a tight game. I think it was 57 54 at the half, was it? 57 57. So it was 57 at the half. It was tied. But it seemed like Houston had control, didn't it? It felt like Houston has to win that game. Yeah. Durant's gone out. No, KD. They got the windows kind of open. They're, they're like thinking, okay, last year we missed all these threes. So, you know, they have to figure in a weird way. You know, I don't know if they were going to beat LeBron. But look, man, I just – that game was like Harden has to come through. He has to – and he got off to an incredible start. So, give him that. Like, it was a little different from when, like, the first layup – against Boston this year, his first drive on the right side, I just immediately, I could see, I went, nope, he's he's not up for this right now. And he didn't even take the layup. I don't think, I think he passed out of it. This one, he was way more active in the beginning, but that inbound thing at the end, like, I just don't know what it is. Like, have you ever played with guys or you just felt like, it's one thing to not produce, but you felt like they were just, whatever their wiring is that makes them special that in that spot, there's just something that was a little... They just weren't super comfortable. I don't know, man. I don't know if it's as visual as basketball. You can see it. Football, it's kind of hard for us. Yeah, it's hard to see it in football. And you're, you're usually like, if, if you, you're off to, you're in danger. Yeah. <laughs> this is nah, a little different. It, yeah. Everything's pretty rehearsed 
And so you kind of know situations, you know yeah, that's a good point. what to expect. Like there's a lot of improv in basketball, you know, like you can, you can hone down a two minute drill. You have zero timeout, this, that, and you can practice those situations and you can see through guys and practice if they're going to be confident in the game. Yeah. That's Ish. different. It's, that's different, it's different in football. And in the, the times that we didn't have it, we lost. <laughs> you know what I mean? Anyway. They anyway. S- they swept Portland. I felt like in that series in the Western Conference Finals, they didn't even want to sweep them. And then they were they were kind of like mailing it in. They knew they were going to win the series, even without Durant. And then they went like, do you guys just want to sweep them now? And Because <laughs> uh, I remember watching that one specifically. And then, look, Durant goes down again. That's when these, then Clay blows out his knee. You know, so look, the, the the Raptors pulled it off. How strained is that locker room with KD when he leaves? That was him in the the KD Draymond kind of beef year. I think it's all out there now at this point. Yeah. Like Draymond was too much for KD, and honestly, Draymond's a little bit too much for a lot of people. The but cool kid same, too, right? Yep. But at the same time, like in basketball, I have a big big belief that you need one guy that's a little crazy Enforcer. in a good way, a little unhinged. And it's not just about hard foul, but like you need somebody. Because as much as I love this Warriors team, the rest of the guys are very passive dudes. Like Durant's kind of a passive guy. Steph can be a passive guy. Clay can be a really passive guy. So I think he's kind of their emotional center at times. So, you know, look, I still think these guys would be successful in another version of this roster. But the Durant showing up and then being like, I got my rings, I'm out of here. <laughs> Looking back at it, too, I didn't have as much of an issue with it because I thought he wanted to leave Westbrook, and Westbrook isn't really one of my favorite guys to watch play hoops. So I understood it, but uh, this probably went as long as it was pro- supposed to go. I mean, that's, that's, the, that's the world now. Guys, I mean, that was it? excessive. That was a lot. I mean, if the team wins 73 games, loses in Game 7 of the finals, and arguably like the second best player in the NBA is like, I'm in. How do you make your team better? You can never get mad at a team trying to get better. I don't blame. I don't blame the <laughs> I don't team. Were they going to say no? Because there was also a really weird thing where the cap spike went up because of the TV money. So had that happened in any of the other off seasons, the Warriors would have never been able to get KD. Wow. So then, by the way, they since changed that rule, so they can't just have an out of nowhere spike of thirty million dollars. It has to be. You're still going to get the player money. It's still going to be broken up based on the CBA. See, I don't but know. I don't know the the CBA. Like it was the really caps and stuff. Don't don't guys just spend over it anyways and pay a luxury tax or something? There's the a new soft rules cap. Weird. The new rules weird, like tougher, right? The new the rules apron. are much more restrictive. It's basically a hard cap for the teams at the top, um, which you know you're not going to realize until you're kind of in it. But this was just really really weird. The TV money exploded. Okay, so it's the 16 summer going into 17. And the league was like, hey, we want to smooth this out. And the Players Association, which at the time was being run by Michelle Roberts, who I thought did a bad job, she was like, no. You know, it basically comes down to like any CBA in sports. Like owners say Tuesday, no, we want it Wednesday. I mean, it's just the way it is because it's been, you know, I don't, I don't blame anybody for not yeah. having trust on the other side of it. So as soon as the league's like, we shouldn't just have all this money be in the cap space we should we should smooth it out. The players association immediately is like no, but I don't think the players association really understood what it meant. So now all of a sudden, like if LeBron could have gone in a time machine, being like, we better push that that can't happen, so that Durant doesn't end up on the Warriors, and I have to go up against maybe the greatest five of all time. So that's another tidbit, and they've since the new rule doesn't allow for that to happen again. So that's another part of this that's pretty crazy. Is that like public, or did you like you know this? No, it's public. It's public. But yeah. like, do a lot of people know this theory? Nobody cares yet because it hasn't happened yet. It's like recycling. <laughs> I recycle. Fucking right, man. Once I start seeing like... You, do you, did you grow up recycling? Big time. I don't know. I, it's not that hard to do, man. I didn't realize it was like that people didn't do it until I left California. Right. When somebody came over to my house and I was like, do you know those two bins? One of them has like bottles and stuff in it. And One, the other has like garbage. Blue bag. And you know, usually there's a blue bag for recycle. My mom always had blue bag. I'm blown away when somebody doesn't recycle, it's recycle a plastic bottle. When I went to Ohio. They didn't even know what it was. <laughs> no, and I'm, I love it. <laughs> That's I was my like, favorite part of the podcast. I went to Ohio. They didn't even know what it was. I'm <laughs> telling you, it was crazy. Is is hard never going to win a championship? You know he could have a late. He, if you're watching as the main guy, never, never, never's a long time. Now would he 
tag on with somebody else later on, I'm not going to rule that out. By yeah. the way, that guy's still trying to figure out where his max contract is. So, <laughs> you know, who knows how the the financial chase will go for him down the road. Hell, he might is be he your gonna get another max. I might be nicer because if we start hanging out, he could be your neighbor. It's going to get awkward. Is he? Is he was one of my coaches for a basketball celebrity game. <laughs> oh no like, way! You you're a celebrity. The best thing with Harden being your coach fiend. is I just I wasn't getting enough touches. I just checked myself in. I mean, I was like, hey, I got to go in. And he was like, what? <laughs> I lebron him. I'm a tough guy to coach, as, I, as we've discovered today. You got to be coachable. <laughs> I'm not. I'll show up for you, but I'm going to ask questions. I would have never been a Patriot. You know who was kind of like that? <laughs> Martellus Bennett. Oh, I can't imagine. Dude, he came in. Because, <laughs> like, you know, there's a way. Uh, you know, an offense. There's a way. There's right. a way. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Marty, he would be just, he'd be asking questions. They were fucking great questions, but like you never heard people asking like, why are we doing, like Marty would be like, hey, McDaniel, why are we doing this? And he, he sounds like fucking, he sounds like Samuel L. Jackson. Yeah, yeah. Right. Like when he breaks up the room, <laughs> like we're in offensive meeting and he would say something and he's like, I don't know why the fuck are we doing that? You know, like, <laughs> but you could only laugh at Marty because he'd hate, he'd back it up with like, if we're doing this and why like he knew they were that, good questions. They were good questions, but yeah. you just never heard that. For especially a new guy that came in. Well, how many years was he there? I think he was there too, but he dude, we won a Super Bowl. He no, had, I'm I'm not that like that dude is I he was nasty. He was he nasty, was a but, great football player, man. He because we didn't have Gronk that year. And he was he was our guy in the playoffs, man. He was a fucking stud. He he could block his nose off. You know, he had a bad shoulder, so he couldn't get his arm up a lot of the times, but he was such a force with the ball in his hand, too, and he can, he he was a matchup problem. Dude, Mar Martellus Bennett is a very underrated fucking tight end. I just know enough of being in the the mix of talking about the Pats, and again, the first three years I was in the business, we were talking about him every yeah. fucking day, but just the idea somebody comes in that's new, it's like, why are we doing this? Because it's like eventually everybody knows this. But that's you, Marty. Right. You can you can be asking good questions, but eventually I don't want to hear those either. <laughs> Dude. It was it was but it was it was so fun to have that energy. That's cool. You know, because you know when you it's it you're in a, a certain routine and you got a guy like Marty come in, kind of give you a laugh. That's good, man. That's Any uh Jack, we miss anything? No, I was just over here going deep on the CDC's website, uh reading up on Rabdo after we talked about Delhi. Yeah, Rebdo. Yeah, right? I didn't even know about it. You never heard about Rebdo? I may never exert myself physically again after you reading about exert this. exert so much that, like, you're, what, what, what happens? It's like uh, like the proteins and electrolytes get released into your bloodstream, and then I guess they can end up causing, like, organ failure and I'm surprised there isn't some Instagram guy who, like, is seeking Rebdo <laughs> and telling us that's the way. Liver, the Rebdo king? Right. I mean, you, like, that means you're not working hard enough. Right. Like, yeah. Are you even Rebdo, bro? Yeah. <laughs> that's, that, that should be a term. <laughs> I love that you knew it. You were looking at me. I was like, I, I don't know. Yeah, I, I didn't know Rabdo. I mean, you, you you look like you're a gym guy. You're I don't want to. Do, I don't want to do that. Rabdo, yeah. baby. No, well, thanks. This kid, Not I go to this cardio. gym. He, he got it. I'm like, what the oh fuck? my god, like, bro, go sleep. You and Delhi go to the same <laughs> gym, huh? Take a day off. Yeah, you, you can't. You got to go two on, one off. Two on, two off. Two on, one off. Two on, two off. Body needs the recovery. Hell yeah. No, nah, that was about it. We we're pretty clean this up. What do we name this game, Ryan? What is the name of this game? Uh, Second half Steph? Oh, Steph's game. Okay, yeah. I thought we were talking about the celebrity football game again. Um, uh. <laughs> so, let's see here. Uh, stakes. Stakes de la soul. Wait, 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 what's the name of the game, though? Oh, what's the what's name, the of, name it? of the game? Is it a second half Steph? We hate Houston. Steve Kerr at that moment said it's his favorite game he's ever coached. That's the right. favorite game of Steve Kerr. We can work on that, but yeah, general it's premise. There. Move the words around. A little bit. <laughs> Steve Kerr, the game. Steve Kerr game of favorites. Of favorites, <laughs> I love it. All right, let's score the game. <laughs> the stakes of this game out of one out of ten. One out of ten. Uh, it's probably an eight. They're, they were up three two. They still were going to go home to close it out, but Durant goes out. The stakes, though, individually for Steph's rep for a night at halftime when he had zero points in this game, like. They were a lot higher, but I, you can't put like a nine or ten on this, right? Because they still had a game in their back pocket to go home. So at seven, Not a, yeah, I go seven. Star power. We got. A, there's a lot of stars here. We had Beyonce and Jay Z at the fucking game. Khaleesi was there sitting courtside. Who? Miranda. Khaleesi. Khaleesi. She was. I don't know why she was in Houston. Uh, James Goldstein was there. He's always there. Players. What do you think on star power there, right? James Goldstein. He'd be like a main Red Claws game. Uh, 
That dude just loves hoops. He loves. I would love like he's like a white whale of guests I want on this podcast. I don't. I think he'd probably do it. He's you know he's cool enough. Hell His yeah. big thing is no access badge. He just walks and it's like he's kind of waiting for somebody to fuck up. That's fucking sick. He doesn't have an access badge. I've never seen him with one on. And like he goes back when I would have media passes for stuff. Like I might. I never had to do it, so I'm lucky. He's I, just that known. Yeah. So like you go in the back and watch like the post game presser like set up in some fake tent like Dunkin' Donuts. You know, whole deal. Maybe you know, Red Claws game. WB too, Mason. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. And then uh, he would just be in the back, like <laughs> hands tucked in the front pockets of the jeans, just checking out the post game. So that's his thing. He's really into it, man. So good for him. I was at a late night party. I was like, how'd you make your scratch there? He was like, well, people know me from architecture. I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, I, I think he was kind of like, you can fuck off, dude. He's a real mysterious kind of right. cat. With like, that you, got, you got pleated Banana Republic khakis on. Just get away from me. So that's all I could afford at the time. Star Man. power nine, nine. Eight. We'll go nine. Well, Durant's hurt, so he's not playing in it. So yeah, it could have been a ten, but yeah. gameplay. It was a really good game. This was actually like uh, it went back and forth. I mean, but then they against, came back at the end too. Where you're like, they were trying to make those threes. They hit a Houston, couple. Yeah, yeah. They hit like three in a row. Because like, you kept thinking like eventually. That's also where Steph ends up with a ton of points is on the free throws because they'd hit a shot and then have to foul again. Yeah. So if they had missed like three possessions prior, maybe Steph ends up like in the mid twenties. But he started racking up the points with the free throws because they kept letting him get it on the inbound too. Uh, eight. Eight. And even look, like, push back. I'm just this is your system. No, this is yours. This is this oh. is you. All this right. is we want our guests scores. Belichick. Well, there's a couple turnovers there late. Could have gone either way. So uh, you know, we should like try to clean that up. That is a good Belichick. Thanks. Look, look, like fellas, like we can't go out there playing the game the wrong way. Like what the fuck, Jones? You know, there's a guy. I saw a guy at Attleboro Junior High the other day that makes that pass. <laughs> I love how when when he goes and he he fluffs the. Uh, that He'll was fluff my favorite. The, the he doesn't do it. Quarterback. He doesn't do it as much. He used to just like. I remember one time you guys were playing. I don't even know if you're on the team then. Like the other team sucked. He's like, well, you know, their their pump protections the last couple of years. They didn't know what he does better than those guys. Dude. And you were like, you have to be dying laughing when you go back to the hallway and being like, I fed them that I love their punt protection. Because I always thought there was like a little glimmer of like. A rat, and then I've said that to some people, and be like, "Nope, you wouldn't like them, like wouldn't." Nah. And then there is none of that. And I go, "I just, I don't know that I believe it. I think there's got to be a few people out in the world that have connected with him where they get, they get kind of something out of him. But maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. A guy I can dream. <laughs> what's, the, what's the name? Score of the name? What is the the Steve Kerr game of favorites? Four. <laughs> <laughs> game, <laughs> game of favorites. <laughs> what's our average? A flat seven. A flat seven. Where does it rank in the games that we've done? Wait, you guys did the Pro Bowl? That's awesome. Who'd you do that with? Braden Marshall. He never played in a playoff game, so we had to. You know. This is right behind That's the double doink. That's sandwich, terrific. Sandwiched in between the double doink and the Manning Braden seven. Braden Marshall was the MVP. We worked together inside the NFL. He, he said he wanted to talk about that one. Oh, our naming hurt this game. But you know what? It shouldn't be. It's Mavericks Heat shouldn't be. Nine and a half. That shouldn't be over Giants. Pats. No yeah, offense. Mark Cuban like, came in here and gave everything tens. Yeah, he we're not going to argue with Cubes. Cubes. Yeah, I was trying to sell him a couple things, so I'd let his score go. <laughs> that same thing happened to him the first time he was on around the horn. Tony Reale just gave him points constantly the whole time. Uh, he must have been pitching him an app after the fact. <laughs> you know, it, like Cuban was just sitting there smiling the whole time. I told him I wouldn't pitch him anything, but I think I pitched him like five things. <laughs> yeah, Israeli basketball teams. Israeli basketball. They team. should do a show where you pitch him stuff. Yeah, <laughs> tank all... something, something tank maybe. Uh, Jules Tank. <laughs> he just comes over. We're like, we're taping a pod, but before we get started, where are you on towels? <laughs> we missed anything, Jack? No, that was it. That was awesome, Ryan. You want to? Uh... uh, yeah, I got a book coming out. Uh, the history of the longshoreman. Longshoreman. Yep. What it, sure. So what is what is that? Pretty self-explanatory. Uh, longshoremen. I, I don't know don't, what that is. I just don't feel like they've been covered enough. And I don't want to be forgotten historically, so I'm working on it. But it's going to take a while. Hell yeah. Does it, like, how, how do you prepare for that? I'm fucking with you, dude. I'm just kidding. Uh -huh. I'm sorry. I thought sorry. Uh, you seem like a guy that would be writing a book on I, uh, I always like to plug a fake book when I do these. <laughs> 
<laughs> so I'm sorry, man. You had me hype. Thanks. Did I have you hyped? Yeah, it's like, like I'm not buying sort of that. Like, season two of the Wire Box. Box. I would have bought it. We'll get you a PDF. <laughs> do you got Do you have it in a uh, what are the, the the voice books? Audio, Audio book. book. Also known as maybe she put you in on that. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's books but thing. voices. <laughs> Thanks for coming on, bro. Hey, you're the best. Jules. Thanks, Thanks for coming man. on. This we gotta awesome. do it more. Yeah, less leg. Well, that was a, that was a great show. He he knows a lot. Love Ryan. TV podcast people, they just they they know how to store information. I don't know if I'll ever no? get to that. Yeah, I mean it's insane. The stuff I got to Google, he just right off the dome. He's a he's a real he's a fan. He's a beast. Like that 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 Boston fandom, but like he you could just tell he. He's a fanatic. He knows the games. He knows, you know, he's talking situational basketball, situational football. And he knows a lot of stuff. And he's able to harness it and stay objective. And Segway us good when we needed to. Segway we're getting us. long. I mean, he was running the show. It was crazy. We need more. I mean, him, Rich, all those guys. Yeah. That was, that was Should fun. Should we uh, get into a little bit of a new post-show segment here? What's this post-show segment, Jackie? We're doing a little bit of a top five, top five, uh, which is... Our top five, top fives. Everyone's ranking everything these days. It's top five this, top five that, and the TikTok algo loves it. Everyone loves it. So maybe we come up with our top five things top to five. lists, to list, and then we'll end up doing those top fives at some point down the line. So you got to stick around. So we have to do a top five of the top five list. So like an example would be top five burgers. I mean, we. I. I, I mean, I'm the burger. You burger, yeah. And burger then at guy. some point we actually run through that list so right now we're just trying to find our five yeah, yeah that's that's on a top five but i don't know where but that's that's definitely on there that's got to be in the hopper right that's in the hopper all right so we got one down um i like food top fives i like food top I, fives the best. i don't know why i just go top five of foods <laughs> seriously mine i i was talking in the kitchen with kyler top five gummies i'm a gummy guy you, you know love gummy gummies guy. love well, my gummies we got to do a top five gummy top five gummies we're t- top know, five burgers we're talking regular gummies here oh yeah oh yeah we're talking regular are we talking reg Oh, a little wink action <laughs> for the listeners. Nah, we're talking Haribo, baby. Top five Sandler movies? I like Sandler movies in there. There's so many to choose from. So many. We can read all those things off the dome. Water Boy. Water Boy, Mr. Deeds, Big Daddy. Wedding Singer. Happy. I loved Mark. Big Daddy. Everyone used to call me Frankenstein <laughs> because of the kid's name was Julian and he wanted to name himself called... Frankenstein. Dude, how did I never put two and two together? That rocks. Yeah. And remember he could spit and it would touch the ground. Yeah. He'd suck it back up. Yeah. He liked the eat, stick eating ketchup packets. <laughs> the stick with the the roller bladers. Yeah, I always right. look for that area at, in Central. I've Park. never seen. I've it. never seen it ever. It's a very. Uh, I didn't know Central Park was that had like big steep steep points like that. Me either. Damn you, Scuba Steve. Scuba Steve. Fuck yeah! Right, so I we use got that to, every once in a while too. He's got to. Anytime you step on anything, she just looks at me like, "What the fuck are you talking about?" <laughs> she doesn't say that, but I could see it with her eyes. We got top five. Directors, if we're staying in the movie category, we got top five. We're talking dynasties of all time. That's tough. That'd too. be tough because then you got to like do some re- re- you like in the researches. And it's too much. I am yeah. with you. Um, and you don't want to be. You don't want to do a top five of what you're number one on. You're you're part of a number one. No, that's yeah. Who wants yeah. that? I like uh, back to our food angle. I love a good top five fast food spots. Fast food. I know we don't need a t- we don't need a ton of fast food, but I still like right. I love fast food. I do too. But it's gotten shitty. I know. It's in especially in a city. City fast food is always worse than suburb fast food in my opinion. Like a city depends on the suburbs. Well, yeah. But like a New York like a big city like Burger King, like with no drive through, like it's I always gonna suck. Not that I'm a BK guy really. I I I, I low key like B, BK. I mean I used to love their barbecue sauce and their nuggets and their old school fries and the chicken was good. But I like, like their rectangle chicken sandwich. I don't know why it was a rectangle. I, I don't know, know, but it would look cool on that yeah. submarine type roll. <laughs> I, and I loved the Whopper. Home I loved the Whopper. the Whopper as a kid. And I, I, I liked their fries. And I, they're not McDonald's fries, but they were they were different from McDonald's they had a fries. They a little crispier. That, like, crispier and like almost like a, I don't want to say like a sheen, but it was almost like a coating. Yeah. They did a little something extra for you. Yeah, we got to do the fast food spots. Fast food. We got one more. What are we thinking? Food wise, uh, tacos. I like tacos. We are here in LA. We gotta do that. We gotta go. We gotta go do some. We gotta go check them out. I'm down. Stands everywhere. Hit little little trucks. I hit this little stand right here in Brentwood. Off. What is it? Uh, Bundy. In oh, Santa on the main. The main kind of drag there. right on the side. Where they be lining up? I love a mean, lean, 
carne asada barrito. Yeah, now we're talking. Hell Thing yeah. is, I, it, it, they don't have crema, and I love crema in my burritos. Yeah, you're a crema guy. Their, their, their rice is very good. Their frijoles, their beans are very good, and they have good salsas and stuff. I wonder if, would they be offended if I brought crema and 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 put it on my burrito? I don't think so. A little crema. Have you done that? Kyler does it. You do it? Absolutely. Yeah, because they don't do sour cream here. You got to do it. I like the sour cream. Yeah, you need the cream. But you got to get the crema cream. What's that? Uh, The table cream. Table cream. Yeah. It's a little It's a little watery. I like that. Oh, I think that that, that makes the burrito. Here's my, here's my top five list, just to put lists out there. I like top five directors, top five pizza places, top five burgers in L.A., in LA. In LA. Uh top five we can't family do pizza. members. Everyone does pizza. All right. We'll do these top fives coming up. We'll do them coming we'll up. We'll do them coming Definitely up. Definitely. Get ready. We gotta do our research and do a little R&D. on these. Yeah. What an episode. Thanks again to Ryan. That was fun. I and I learn I like guests that I learn from. Me too. We're lifelong learners. Try you to learn know, something new every day. What did old Frank used to say when you're green you grow and you're ripe, you rot. <laughs> That's what old Fox said. That's been another episode of Games with Names presented by Wynn. Remember to follow us on YouTube, Instagram, X, TikTok, Twitter, and Snapchat. Still don't know if the X and... I'm, I still say Twitter. Twitter, guys. Twitter, guys. Uh, see you next week, guys. Come on, Jack. Later. Let's go get some burritos. Yeah. That's been another episode of Games with Names presented by Win Las Vegas and Encore Boston Harbor. Games with Names is a production of iHeartRadio. For more podcasts from iHeartRadio, visit the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts.